In this video, I will show you how to publish your Android application on the Google Play Store. We will cover everything from store listing creation to submitting your app for review. And for those who have created their account after November 2023, I will show and explain how to publish your app in the beta test track and add the 20 testers. I've added chapters to the video, so you can easily skip to the one that interests you the most. You must have a Google Play developer account to publish your apps to Google Play. If you haven't created one yet, go watch this video where I show you step by step how to create your developer account and verify it. Assuming that you have your developer account now, the first thing to do is to head to the Google Play console website and sign in. Once there, make sure that home is selected in the left navigation menu, then click the create app button to create a new app. On this page, you will enter the app name, select the default language of your app. Is it an app or a game? Is it free or paid? Don't worry too much about these values at this stage. You will have the possibility to change them later. Make sure you review and accept the developer program policies, play app signing terms and the US export laws. Then click create app to continue. Now you'll be taken to your app dashboard page. From here, there are two approaches that you can use to publish your app. You can either follow and complete the different tasks included here in this dashboard page, or you can use this left navigation menu to complete the different tasks in your preferred order. But in this case, you will need to know where to find each task in this menu hierarchy. One thing that is important to know is that the dashboard will display different information depending on what stage you are in your app deployment. For example, after publishing the app, this dashboard page will no longer display those sections, but a screen like this one with statistics and metrics about the app. So when you will need to publish an update for your app, you will have no other choice than to use the navigation menu. That's why this tutorial will mostly use the navigation menu instead of following the dashboard. Now, enough with the explanations. Let's start setting up the app. We will start with the app content section, which is at the bottom of the navigation menu. You will need to complete all these tasks here, and I would suggest that you complete them in this order since some of them are requirements for others. So let's start with the privacy policy. Even though the privacy policy is not always required, it's good practice to always add one, especially if your app targets an audience that includes children under 13. More on that later. You only need to paste a link that will redirect the users to your privacy policy page on a website. Let's click save, then back here to return to the app content page. Now let's continue with ads. Here you have to declare if your app displays ads or not. This will be visible to a user who wants to download your app on the app download page. Click save, then back to app content. Now app access. Since Google will review your app, you need to give them access to it. So if parts of your app are restricted, Based on login credentials or other forms of authentication, you must provide the access details by filling out this form. For this demo, we will choose All functionality is available without special access, then click Save. Back to App Content, we'll continue with Content Rating. Here, you will complete an IARC questionnaire to calculate your app rating. This rating will be displayed on your app page to help users decide whether your app is suitable for them. We will first enter an email, then choose a category for the app. Let's choose all other app types for this demo, then click Next. Here are some other questions that you need to answer. Here, we will choose No for all of them. But in your case, make sure you choose the answer that applies to your app. Let's save, then Next. These are your app ratings for different places in the world. If you agree with everything, click Save. Otherwise, go back to change your answers in the questionnaire. Now we have our app ratings. Let's go back to app content to continue with the other tasks. Next task, target audience. Here, you will tell Google the target age group of your app. This helps to make sure that apps designed for children are safe and appropriate. As mentioned earlier, if you want to target children under 13, you must add a privacy policy. For this demo, we'll choose 13 and over. Then click next. Since our app doesn't target children under 13, it skips those two steps. 
Could your store listing unintentionally appeal to children? By store listing, they mean your app page on the Play Store. Even though we haven't created our store listing yet, I am sure it will not appeal to children. So let's choose No, then Next. If you agree with the summary, click Save and go back to App Content. News Apps. Is your app a news app? If you choose Yes, you will have to provide some information on how you source your news content. In our case, it's No. Click Save, then back to App Content. Next, Data Safety. In this questionnaire, you'll be asked to provide information about the user data collected or shared by your app. The information you provide will be shown on your store listing. Make sure you understand the definition of these concepts and also what is required to disclose. Then, click Next. As you can see, this questionnaire is more complex than the previous ones. Each selection may lead you to more questions to answer, so take the time to fill it correctly. If you want a dedicated video on this data safety questionnaire, let me know in the comments below. For this demo, since we mentioned earlier that the app displays ads, we must select yes here, and since we are using the AdMob SDK, we can say that it's encrypted. Here, we'll select my app does not allow users to create an account. This one is optional, but I will select no anyway. Then click next. On this page, you must select any user data type collected or shared. Take time to go through them all and select all that apply to your app. Again, for this demo, since we said earlier that our app displays ads, we must select device or other IDs, then click next. Now, for each data type selected on the previous page, you will have to say how data is used and handled. Here, we will say the data is collected. Then, yes, it is processed ephemerally. Users can choose whether this data is collected. And for the reason, it's being used for advertising or marketing. Then click Save. Since we only add one, let's click Next. Here, on this preview page, you will have a preview of what will be shown to users on Google Play based on all your selections. If you agree with everything, just click Save. Next. Advertising ID. If your app uses Advertising ID and targets Android 13 or later, you must declare this permission in the app manifest file. Basically, if you say yes for Advertising ID, they will block your release if it doesn't include this permission. More on that later. So here, we will select yes, and then the reason why we're using Advertising IDs. For this demo, I will only select Advertising or Marketing. Click Save, then back to App Content. Now, Government Apps. This one is pretty straightforward. Is your app developed by or on behalf of a government? Yes or no? Financial features. Here, you need to select all the financial features your app provides. And if it's not a financial app, just select My app doesn't provide any financial features. Click Next, then Save. Health apps. Like we just did for the financial features, does the app include any health features? Make sure to select all that apply, or my app does not have any health features, click save, then back to app content. As you can see, all the tasks from this tab have been completed, but you can always come back to the action tab to update your answers in the future. Now, let's go back to the dashboard. As you can see, we have two more tasks to complete before we can actually upload and release our app. These tasks are related to how the app will be presented on the Play Store page. To start with the first one, we can click directly here or go to the Growth section of the Navigation menu. Select Store Presence, then Store Settings. On this page, you will need to choose an application type, a category, and tags that best describe the content or primary function of your app. You must carefully choose those values because they will help users discover your apps on Google Play. The app type is one of the selections that we made earlier when creating the app. For the category, we will go with Books and Reference. The tags are not required, but it helps our app ASO to have them. In this list, we will have to choose up to five tags describing the content and functionality of our app. Since this is a demo, we will choose five random tags. For your contact details, you must give at least an email. Keep in mind that your contact details will be shown to the users on Google Play in case they would like to contact you. Back to the dashboard. Next, we will select the main store listing. 
This page is maybe where you will spend most of your time and also the one that requires more planning. That is because your app name, short description, and long description will play a big role in helping the user find your app in the Play Store. Use the right keywords, but don't overdo it. Make sure your app doesn't come across as spammy or promotional, or it will risk getting suspended on the Play Store. Since this is a demo, I just entered some random things. The graphic assets are as important as the app details. They help you showcase your app's features and functionalities. The app icon, phone, and tablet screenshots should make a great first impression and therefore drive more downloads for your app. All the graphic assets are mandatory, except for the promotional video and Chromebook screenshots. As you can see, there are specific requirements such as the file format and dimensions for each graphic asset that you need to upload. Pay attention to those requirements when preparing your icon, featured image, and screenshots. You can read more about each requirement here. I have already prepared some graphics, so let's quickly add them. Since the requirements for the phone screenshots are the same for the tablets, I will use the same images. For a real app, you should have specific screenshots for each device size. You can also add translations for your app details and assets by clicking this drop-down at the top and choosing Select Language. For each language you select, an empty store listing will be created for you to provide your own translated text and assets. We will not add translations for this demo, so let's remove these and only keep the default English language. Now that we've completed this section, let's click Save and go back to the dashboard to see our progression. As you can see, the App Setup section is no longer visible because we have completed all the required tasks. That means we can now continue to upload our app bundle and release the app. But first, let's talk about some new testing requirements for new developer accounts. Google wants to ensure high-quality apps on the Play Store. So if you created your personal developer account after November 13, 2023, before releasing your app to production, you'll need to run a closed beta test for at least 14 consecutive days with a minimum of 20 testers who have opt-in to test your app. This is to help you catch any issues and get feedback before your app is available to everyone. Note that these testers must remain opt-in and actively test your app for a minimum of 14 days continuously. After completing the closed test requirements, this button will become active and you will be allowed to apply for production access. More on that later. For now, let's go back to closed testing and complete the tasks to release our app to the closed test track. Here, you will first go to the Countries and Regions tab to add the countries where you want your app to be available. So let's click Add Countries Regions. If you want your app to target some specific countries, you can search them here. For this demo, I will choose all countries by checking this checkbox, then click Save. Let's continue to select the testers. As mentioned earlier, now we need to provide the list of the 20 testers who will test the app for at least 14 days. For this, we have two options. We can either provide an email list or a Google Groups. I find it easier with the email list, so let's do that. Give it a name. Then, for the emails, you can either enter them here one by one separated by comma or upload a CSV file. For this demo, I will upload the CSV file. Confirm that everything is OK, then click Create List. If you receive this error, it probably means that some emails are not valid. Fix the issue or upload the CSV file again. To finish, you will also need to provide a feedback URL or an email address which the testers can use to provide you with feedback. Click Save. With those two completed, now we can move to the Release tab where we will finally have the possibility to upload the app bundle. To start, click this Create a new release button. Before you can upload your app bundle, you need to choose if you are going to manage your app sign-in or let Google Play manage it for you. I will not go into detail on what is Play app sign-in and how it works. Just keep in mind, when you use Play App Sign-In, if you lose your upload key, you can contact Google to revoke your old upload key and generate a new one. That way, you can continue to upload new versions of your app as updates to the original app. I always follow the recommended option, which is to use Google Generated Key. Now, we can finally upload our app bundle. The release name will be automatically filled when the upload completes. The release notes are not mandatory, especially since it is our first release. Let's click Next. 
then click save. Now that our app bundle have been uploaded and saved, there is one last step missing to actually send our release to Google for review. We need to go to the publishing overview page. Here, we have a summary of all the changes that we've made so far. We can review them and when we are okay with everything, we can come here and click this button to send all the changes for review. This box is just to let you know that your changes will be set for review and this typically takes seven days. But in my experience, it's usually take around one to three days. Now, if we go back to our Play Console homepage, we can see our app and the update status is in review. Once the review process is completed, your app status will change from draft to close testing. At that time, you will be able to select the app, go to close testing in the left navigation menu, click manage track here, then select testers. Scroll down and then you will see the select that you can share with your 20 testers to opt in to your closed beta testing program and start testing your app. Once your app has been in closed testing for the required 14 days with at least 20 active testers, you will come back to your dashboard and this button will be activated. That means you can now apply for production access. As you can read it here, you'll need to answer some questions about your testing process and app readiness. To have a better idea about those questions, you can click this link here. After submitting your request for production access, Google will review your application, usually within seven days. If your application is approved, you can now release your app bundle to the production track, making it available to the entire world on the Google Play Store. The process of publishing to the production track is almost the same as publishing to the closed testing track. The only difference is that you no longer need to add testers because the app will be available for everyone to download. But if you would like a walkthrough from start to finish, go watch this video where I show you how to publish your Android app in a production track. If you made it so far, please give us a like and subscribe for more videos like this one. See you in the next one.